Hello everyone, in today's video we're just going to take a few moments to show you a couple different tools that you can use to connect Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to some sort of electronic flight bag that you have externally. For example, something that you have on a tablet or a phone. Of course, you could do both. So there's a bunch of different ways to do this. There's actually a couple different ones, but I'm only going to share the ones that I'm familiar with as well as kind of like this order of uh, what's kind of easy to use here. So first things first, when it comes to electronic flight bags, for those of you who are not familiar with what that is, that is basically going to be an all-in-one device that's going to have all sorts of really, really useful stuff on it. Um, usually you can have things like a flight plan go, four flights going to be an electronic flight bag, uh, you have iFly, which is the one I use. Basically, it's going to be this great thing that's going to give you a GPS display, it's going to give you pretty much everything under the sun that you're ever going to need to know. And in the real plane, they are amazingly, wonderfully useful. Some people, of course, uh, like the extra atomism as far as realism goes, and they like to bring in that element to their own um, flight simulator as well. So there's basically the three that I always kind of played with, and there's kind of the two that I use all the time. The first one's called M MSFS2 Flip Plan. This particular one is kind of neat because it only uh, basically works on Python. So for those of you familiar with Python programming and everything, uh, you probably know exactly how this works. Installation on this is really simple. You're simply going to install Python and then you're going to grab the latest version of this tool. What this tool does is it actually takes the data from Flight Simulator and pretends that it's data from X-Plane so that any application that can receive the data over the um, wire fire network or something along those lines will be able to identify the data and immediately connect to it. This is the first one I used. Um, the only downside to it is it's a little different to use um, as far as difficulty those. I'll go over to my desktop. I'll go over to uh, DIR. We'll go ahead and do CDFS, CDMSFS2 Flit Plan DIR. And basically, what you would do after installing Python is you come in here and you just type in the uh, IP address of what you're actually connecting to. Once you do that, press enter. Obviously, um, we're not in Flight Plan right now or Flight Sim, so it's going to blow up on us a little bit because uh, Sim Connect is not going to be running. It's a pretty straightforward application. I use this for ages because it just kind of works pretty well. So um, that's the first one, MSFS2 Flight Plan. Again, again, this is only going to export data for Flight Plan Go, which is free, by the way, for those of you who are interested. And it's only United States, so you got to watch out for that. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one, this is uh, one of those that I just kind of found on a whim. Uh, it's called FS22GDL90. What this does is this takes the data from Microsoft Flight Simulator and exports it into the GDL90 format. For those of you not familiar with the GDL90, GDL90, Basically, what it is is an interface specification, as you can see, that pretends that it is an ADSB in slash, you know, actually basically a specific type of garment. It actually works really, really well. So what's going to happen is it's going to take your data and it's going to send it onto your Wi-Fi network in a format that anybody who's GDL90 compatible can now read. Now, instead of just being stuck with Flight Plan Go, you can use everybody. Like I use iFly GPS. Now, the neat thing is, unfortunately, this is Windows only. So if I actually would open the sucker up real quick. By the way, there's a great free trial of this that's worth trying. All it does is look like this. As soon as you load up Flight Simulator, all you have to do now is you get all your traffic that would be nearby. It's going to export all this data onto your network, so your electronic electronic flight bag that you have on your network, like I said, your um, tablet with Flight Plan Go or for Flight, will now be able to read that data directly from the Flight Simulator. It's absolutely great for the purposes of practice. And it's also pretty cheap, but again, try it first to make sure it works for you. By the way, pro tip on this one, start this application up in Flight Simulator before you open your flight bag, otherwise you're going to have issues. So the last one, uh, this one's the kind of the classic one, and again, I play with this one a little bit. I like the other two better because uh, one's cheaper and the other one works fine for me, but again, everybody's going to be different depending on what you're trying to do. XMAPSI is a great tool that basically is going to take uh, the data again from Flight Simulator and it's going to export it directly onto your network so you can read it directly onto, like I said, your electronic flight bags. As you can see, um, it basically supports everybody. Notice that GDL90 is uh, one of its default formats, meaning anybody who takes GDL90 format can use this data that comes off of it. This is great. It's going to give you your traffic. It's going to give you, actually, if we go over to XMAPS, it'd be three real quickly here. It's going to give you your traffic. It's going to give you your AHARs for people who have like, you know, the little, um, if you want to imagine the little HSI or the attitude indicator, you can get on some of these applications or even the uh, synthetic vision for those of you who are four flight fans, you can also use that as well. And this is going to work again. It gives you all the compatibility. And the great thing about these guys is they also give you a little demo that you can go ahead and try it out. There's actually two different versions of XMAPSI. Yeah, the first one's uh, the V3 version. If you were to cruise over and I'll scoop this one up, this one's going to be a little bit more expensive, but again, it's like incredibly universally connecting. He's got a great video that actually shows you exactly what it looks like. Obviously, this is from his tablet. This is from the actual flight simulator. He also has this essential version, which kind of cuts out a lot of the stuff most people don't like. It's a little more cost effective, as you can see, but you're not going to have the same level of control. You're not going to have the same level of fidelity. 
So hopefully this video is helpful. Again, uh, like I said, I like the, you know, the one, the command prompt that sends out the explain data is great for starters. Like it works with flight plan, but as time goes on, you're probably gonna end up with either X Mapsy or the other one that I was showing you a moment ago, which is the FS-20 to GDL and 20. And again, for those who fly VATSIM, this will get VATSIM traffic, I tested it, but keep in mind, it is limited to a certain distance away from you. So like, if you take a look down here, just I'm popping down real quick, it's default target scan radius is only 1500 meters. So um, in the real world, of course, so when we're flying with an EFB, you can be looking at traffic from three states over. Again, I'm in the US, so our states are only 100 miles apart. So you can actually see that data all around you. So again, keep in mind, match what you're using for what you're doing. And again, some of this stuff is free. I think you guys will get a kick out of it. Enjoy.